I'm a, I'm a long lost cousin of the Williams family. Yeah. Folks unable to see my cues from the back of the room, I am assuming that we are good to go. We are here in Uptown Charlotte for our session with North Carolina. We are here in the Spectrum Center, which is obviously where the ACC Men's Basketball Tournament will be played in March. For our dais, we've got microphones throughout the room. I would imagine we're going to keep our mic holders hopping during this session. Uh, folks in the room, if you would, please identify not only yourself, but your agency and to which of our personalities you'd like to ask the question to. That way we can get our cameras trained either left or right. So that said, we'll take it out into the room. Who wants the first question? Bob Holliday, second row to our right. Bob Holliday, WRL.com. This is a question for the players and coach, you can jump in if, if you have more to add to their answers. What did you guys learn about the state of the team's readiness for the season from the scrimmage with Villanova? Let's uh, start with Cameron. Uh, I think there's definitely areas that we can improve. Um, I think there's definitely some spots that we did well in, but we, we see the areas that we can improve and we've addressed them. And um, I think going forward, we, we know how to correct it and we know that we can correct it, which is a big thing. Um, there's definitely some areas, you know, rebounding defensively, even offensively that we can improve on. And uh, it, it showed us a lot about ourselves. And I think Villanova is a team that plays with great energy and intensity. And, uh, you know, it's the intense intensity that we're going to have to match and even do better than whenever we step out on the court for uh, games that matter. Coach? Uh, yeah, like Cam said. I call said, him coach, too. <laughs> Thank you. Like Cam said, uh, we went up there and we saw that there were areas where we could improve. Um, but also in those areas, we showed ourselves that, that we could do it. It's just a matter of us doing it consistently. And, um, you know, I think... I think we, we, we definitely watched the film and we saw what it, what it is that we needed to work on and we addressed those things and we'll work on them uh, these next two weeks going into the first game. I don't have anything to add. They said that pretty well. I have one question. Where the hell is Eat It Flaming Amy's? Wellington Flaming Amy's? Good. We've got that out of the way. Next question. <laughs> For the players from the podium here, what's it like coming to this building knowing that you are back here again in March and that there's already a bit of a history with this club here? Can you want to take this one first? Kenny? <laughs> uh, that, was, that was actually the first thing that I said to Cam when we got out of the car. Um, I talked about our last time being in here and how we, how, how we ended our season here. Um, you know, we, we know uh, what happened here and we know that, that we have some history now and uh, we've been, we just use that as, as motivation in practice and, and in the preseason. Uh, coach definitely hasn't let us forget it, but, uh, <laughs> you know, we use it as fuel uh, and motivation to, to get back there and not let it happen again uh, in that same um, situation. So it's, uh, it's, it's definitely something that we won't forget. Cameron? Yeah, um, when Kenny and I stepped out of the car, we, we could kind of feel – I still felt there were some emotions left over in the loading dock from uh, exiting the game against Texas A&M in the tournament. So we weren't even thinking about ACC tournament or, you know, what's upcoming. I think that that sting of, of the tournament was, was still kind of there. And, you know, coaches hadn't let us forget that much over the past couple of days, past couple of weeks. And uh, it's definitely motivation going forward because that's something that you never want to have in the first place, let alone happen two times. So uh, it's something that we can learn from and, you know, it kind of pushes us in a, in a little bit different of a way. Coach, from the podium, I'm curious, you chuckled when he said that you don't let them forget, but there's a fine line between keeping it as a motivation and then just tucking it away and let it be gone. H how do you strike that balance? You'll have to ask them if I've done it successfully or not, but uh, I don't think you should forget things and not that you have an opportunity to learn from, and I think we didn't play as well as we wanted to play against A&M. They did a better job than we did, uh, but I don't think you should just let those things go. I think, as Kenny said, use it as fuel, use it as motivation to play better. As Cam said, remember that and uh, try to play better when you get out there. But uh, uh, we've been beaten a lot in the NCAA tournament over the years. We've won some as well. But uh, uh, I think every year you should remember those things and try to make sure you don't make the same mistakes. And last year I didn't think we defended around the rim very well. We didn't score around the rim very well. And, uh, both of those uh, holes in our game really showed up against A&M, and so we got to try to correct that. Let's go back to Bob Holiday to our right, second row. 
Coach, how are the big men progressing? What are your thoughts about the five position at this point? And obviously, it's too early to tell how much you're going to play the five and how many times you may go smaller. But um, what do the big guys have to do to meet your satisfactions? Well, part of the question there is really easy. I have no idea how many times we'll go big or small because we've had uh, three weeks of practice. We've got uh, two more weeks before the first game. And then things change during the course of the season as to how successful you are, whether you want to stick with what you're doing. Sometimes it's driven by some guys playing great, some guys playing poorly, some guys got a sprained ankle or whatever. But uh, So I don't know that part of the answer. The big guys, Brandon Huffman's had like two practices of all of them that he's been fully healthy uh, because he's had some knee problems. Uh, Sterling Manley, is, it looks like he's playing bigger. Uh, which you like to have length around that basket. Uh, I still wanted to work about 7,433 times harder, uh, but uh, I think that he has improved. Uh, Walker Miller's improved. Uh, Garrison Brooks does more of the little things that coaches appreciate and uh, doing it on the defensive end of the floor and being more aware than the other guys have. Uh, but somebody needs to step up and say, hey, I can do this and not only say it, but do it, prove it to us out on the court. If one of those guys steps up and proves it to us out on the court, I will be more comfortable. Uh, and sometimes that's, that's good that the coach is more comfortable. Sometimes it doesn't make any difference. But uh, I would like for one of those guys to step forward and, uh, or all of them collectively. Uh, it's hard to go in a game and say, okay, I don't know which guy's going to do it tonight. So you give every, you give player A, B, C, and D all a chance, and A, B, and C stink it up. You know, by the time D gets in there, it's it's too late sometimes. But uh, I would like for them to step up and be more consistent uh, with their effort and with their concentration in those two areas more than anything. We'll go uh, to our right, right at the aisle here, fourth row in. Uh, Dana O'Neill with The Athletic. Roy, as someone who's been in this game for a bit and I think is viewed as a steward of the game, if you will, what is your responsibility as you look at kind of the tenor of things right now with the trial and everything like that in terms of addressing that and, and perhaps, you know, helping people understand what's going on with it all? Dana, it's really hard. That's really a good question. Uh, you know, I've stated what my thoughts were, that it's the world that I don't operate in. Uh, I've never had a parent ask me for anything. I've never used an agent, never used a shoe company. Uh, don't do those kind of things. And uh, I think a very intelligent person one time told me there's a difference between being indifferent or having a lack of knowledge. And my problem is I have a lack of knowledge about those things. I'm not very indifferent about it at all. I think that there's some major problems, some problems that need to be worked out, some uh, some things that need to be changed. I don't think you can legislate morality. I don't think you can legislate honesty. Uh, but uh, uh, what we have here is a very big problem that's a national problem that's in the news that we've got to be aware of it. Uh, but it's hard for me to understand. I mean, it's like somebody were to, if I were to ask you guys, how, how do you do a drug deal? Or how do you take care of our nuclear uh, armament process that we have. How do you do something in a nuclear sub? All of you guys are very intelligent. It doesn't mean you're in, not intelligent, but you have no idea how to do all three of those things. I would think uh, that you wouldn't know how to do all of those, but uh, being indifferent is something I'm not. Uh, I think that the problem we have is something that has to be addressed. If I'm uh, able to mentor a college coach, if I'm able to mentor a player that wants to know about the college game, I would say that our glass is really half full. I think there's great things going on in college basketball. I'm a coach that uh, thinks there's great things going on in summer basketball. I had uh, a person that was on one of those committees. I said it to Peach Jam. I said, sit right here with me and watch the game. And at the end of the game, and it was a great game. Okay, one team uh, scored five points in one second and won the game. And people were excited and everything. I said, now tell me what was wrong with what you just saw. And he said, absolutely nothing. Now, I didn't plan the game was going to be that good, but I just wanted to see what he really thought was negative there. But there are some things, and we've got to be aware of that and try to address those situations. If we do have penalties and somebody's found guilty of things, then I think those penalties should be really harsh. Uh, but uh, uh, again, I'll go back to this thing. 1906, I think. I'm close. It's when the NCAA was formed. 
There were some bad things going on in college football recruiting. The President Roosevelt says we need somebody to oversee this, and that was when the NCAA came out. We've had time periods in our game, whether it's football, basketball, in the sports world. We've had some times where some really negative things have been going on and times that there haven't been, and I think this is one of those. But I don't think that I'm trying to put my head in the sand and ignore it. Staying on the aisle, right side, seventh or eighth row down, gentleman in the pink shirt. Uh, Chris Trinkle, Daily Tar Heel. Coach, can you just talk about how Sean May has grown from being an All-American player to now a prominent member of your coaching staff? How he's grown? Yes, he has. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny and Cam will remind him of that when he gets back. He's not exactly my, my man's playing weight, okay? <laughs> uh, no, he's, he's turned the page. I've said this many times, Sean May was one of the five most intelligent guys I've ever coached. Sean played the five spot for us, and he could have run any position in practice in any drill. He knew exactly what to do. In fact, I'll say it and challenge these two guys, he could have played the point guard or the wing in any dummy offense and knew what to do. Again, one of the five most intelligent guys I've ever coached. In his senior year, I thought he was the best player in college basketball, or junior year, excuse me, his last year. And, uh, but he's turned the page on the playing and wants to coach and wants to uh, work with guys uh, that he thinks that he might be able to help. And uh, he's a positive role model for him. He's helped put a banner on one end and his jersey's on the other end. Uh, so he's been very successful. And I'm very, very fortunate to have him back with us and love having him with us every day. We're going to stay on the aisle, but we're just going to move just a couple of spots forward to the right. Hey, Coach. Uh, Frank Maloney, uh, who's talking? Fox Sports 9, 10 in Richmond. Curious what your thoughts are on the uh, increase in the conference schedule to 20 games in the future and pros and cons, if you will. <laughs> that has been an issue that I've been very outspoken about. I didn't like the way it was done. Uh, I asked uh, one time I said to some TV folks, I said, uh, had you rather have us against the team that's last place really struggling just have no players or would you rather see us play Kentucky or Kansas or Arizona and they said well of course those games and I said well we go to 20 games I'm not going to play as many as those games uh, last four years our schedule by the tournament committee has been number one number six number six and number one the last four years so we played a very difficult schedule and heck this year may be the most difficult schedule we've ever played but in reality, the move to 20 games, it's really a 21-game schedule because we have the ACC Big Ten, and we're not going to do away with that and, and shouldn't. Uh, but it does make it harder. You can't play Golden State Warriors one night and the Boston Celtics the next night and you know Portland the next night in college because you have to have some time where your guys uh, gain some confidence. I used this as an example earlier today. I had two first-year players one time at Kansas. And they were both very gifted, very highly rated, very important to our program. First game of the year, we played Georgia. Hugh Durham was a coach who was a great defensive coach. He backed off those two youngsters by 12 feet. They didn't make a shot. The next game, we went to Indianapolis and played Bob Knight's Indiana team, and they backed off those same two guys 12 feet. Now, much different than the two guys sitting up here with me. I could not get those guys to shoot for three months. These guys are shooting three seconds up here. Uh, but with those kids completely lost their confidence. And so I think there's sometimes for building confidence, there's sometimes for building team chemistry, and it's hard to do that if you're playing those kind of teams all the time. So I'm not in favor of it. Uh, I'd, uh, the coaches had no voice in it whatsoever, and uh, we go to the spring meetings, there's no talk about it, and then all of a sudden in July we're doing it. So uh, that's, that's what happened. Back to Bob Holiday to our right, second row. Bob, you've got to be getting tired, son. <laughs> this question for Cam. This is your second year in the program, and from what I understand, you're healthier now. Uh, how will the experience and the improved health enhance what you're able to do on the court this year? Uh, I think it'll go a long way for me. Um, you know, going into a new program last year, uh, adjusting to everything that comes along with that, and then having to sit out a couple weeks before getting back, and then having to jump kind of jump in really close to conference play was a little bit different. 
Um, so this year, I feel like I'm just on a better foot. I feel like I have uh, more knowledge of the system, more knowledge of what coach wants, more knowledge of what my teammates want to do. And, you know, with, with my body feeling a little bit better, I can step out on the court each day, you know, focus on basketball more than kind of the ache and pain of the day or anything like that. So it's just a little bit of a burden off my shoulders, a little bit of a burden off my back. And I'm looking forward to uh, getting a, a heavier portion of non-conference and getting my feet under me towards uh, conference play this year. Down the aisle to your right, the gentleman behind the pink shirt. Uh, Keaton Eberly, Caroline Connection for WCH Ellen Chapel Hill. Uh, Coach, what are your initial thoughts over North Carolina Senator Rick Gunn and uh, James and Alexander Jr. just talking about their open letter to the NCAA expressing their displeasures over the Hurricane Florence charity game? Steve Kirshner is going to appreciate you guys because you all throwing me some lobs. Um, you know, I saw the letter uh, from uh, Mr. Emmert, the president of the NCAA, which is the hardest job in the world as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but, you know, it was frustrating. The response was frustrating. It's still frustrating. Uh, fairly close. I can't give you the exact date. I may be able to go back and figure it out on my calendar. But after the hurricane hit, uh, I'm trying to think of some ways that we might be able to do some things. And last year we did something very simple, very small. We raised a little bit of money, and I was trying to think of a way to make a lot of money that we could give to the hurricane victims because it's I'm in eastern North Carolina quite a bit, and I see what's going on. I have a house in, in Wilmington, and uh, so I said, you know what went on down there. And you watch TV. I watched the uh, Weather Channel for three days, and more than those three days I ever have in my life. So I saw what was going on and tried to figure out a way to make a lot of money. And the two areas that were hurt more than anyone, and not the only ones, but hurt more than anyone, was North Carolina and South Carolina. So I called Frank Martin to see if he would be willing, and he jumped on immediately and said he would be willing to do it. And uh, so we applied for the waiver. And the fact of the matter is, they, when our compliance girl was on the phone, they said, we don't want you to apply because we're not going to uh, uh, not going to say yes. We're not going to permit it. Uh, we've made decisions we're not doing any waivers. And so then I made the statements at my press day that I was really sad that it happened. And someone immediately called back and said, well, you didn't ask for a waiver. Well, come on now, let's not play games. We were, the reason we didn't ask for a waiver, we're told not to because it wouldn't do any good. And then I hear about the senator sending the letter. And uh, the response was back that every school had uh, two opportunities. You can play two scrimmages, you can play two exhibitions, or one of each. Well, we already had an exhibition schedule with Mount Olive. We do it to teams in our state so we can give them some money to help their programs. Every year I've been there, we've scrim I played an exhibition game against somebody in our state. We already had that scheduled. We didn't want to take money away from them, and I didn't necessarily think that would raise a lot of money, like I thought North Carolina and South Carolina would, particularly if we did it in this building. Uh, we also had a private scrimmage. Uh, scheduled. We had a signed contract for a private scrimmage, and it was bringing in some other state that was not as heavily damaged as our state was. So again, a waiver means that somebody can get a waiver. You don't have a waiver program if you're not going to ever give anybody a waiver, but there was a waiver program. And so I was disappointed that the answer was North Carolina, South Carolina could have made some changes, and we had, they had all the opportunities in the world. Well, the fact of the matter is, we wanted to do it quickly, quickly. And when it was really in front of everybody, it was so, some situations that people were still living through. Uh, and, and so I was disappointed by the answer because, I, uh, and like I say, I think he's got the toughest job there is. Uh, but uh, you're talking about some people who had tremendous tragedies going on in their life. We were not going to gain any advantage on State or Duke or Wake or Virginia or Florida State by playing that game. We were trying to make some money to help some people. That's the bottom line. And yes, you can say we could have canceled Mount Olive, we could have canceled our scrimmage and tried to get it, but I really thought that we could have done that so quickly, getting uh, uh, North Carolina and South Carolina involved, that it was a home run. And again, if there is a waiver process, you know, I, I don't believe you have to treat everybody the same just treat everybody fairly. And I think somebody, pick a state, somebody in Arizona or Idaho or something that sees Weather Channel, see what's going on here, I don't think it would have hurt them.
We're going to see if we can squeeze in two questions within five minutes to our left about the sixth row. I promise row. my next answer won't be as long. That wasn't a comment, Coach, but thanks. I know. <laughs> Ross Martin inside of Carolina. Coach, uh, John Swafford said today that they're going to have kick off the season with an ACC conference game and play a couple games before Christmas. Thoughts on that kind of change to the ACC conference slate? Uh, that doesn't bother me. If we're chosen any year to be one of those, it's going to be the same for everybody. You still play 18 this year. Uh, uh, so it doesn't bother me. I think it's wise. Uh, I don't think we'd be doing it if people didn't think it was a good idea. With that answer, we might be able to get two more questions in. Uh, <laughs> we've got it to the right side about the seventh row back. Uh, Mary Jean Levy, WRAL TV. This one's for Coach. When was the first time that you saw Luke May play in high school, and how has he changed and grown since then? Well, uh, the first time I saw Luke play in high school was. I'm guessing his sophomore year, but he'd been in my basketball camp before that, so maybe in the seventh and eighth grades, the first time I'd seen Luke, I went to that game just to see Luke. Uh, his body's gotten 100 percent better, or at least 99 percent better than it was then. He's much stronger, leaner, quicker, bouncier, all those kind of things. Uh, the other part I would say has changed is. Whenever that was his sophomore, junior year, the kid has spent an unbelievable amount of time and sweat uh, to be the player that he is right now. He's uh, he's one of the better players in our game, and uh, it's all because of sweat. Last question to the gentleman with the Daily Tar Heel down the aisle to the right. Uh, Coach, this is for you again. Um, so obviously three-point defense was somewhat of a, a struggle last year. How have the newcomers come in? Have any of them impressed you as perimeter defenders so far? Well, the new guys, I think Kobe's really good defensively and has a chance to be really good. Uh, I think Leakey is uh, very good defensively and has a chance to be really good. Uh, Nasir is so athletic that he can be really good as well, and, and he works really hard. Uh, so I'm hopeful that all three of those guys can uh, be very good defenders for them. And, and you're right, I said something about scoring around the rim and defending around the rim. The other thing that was a negative for us last year was uh, guarding the three-point shot. And so far, the chances that we've had this year, we haven't done a much better job of it <laughs> in, our, in our secret scrimmage. North Carolina, thank you. Good luck this Thanks, year. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Folks, Syracuse is due up next. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.